Only in see me, bro. You get that. Or no, you get it anywhere where it's white suburbia, you know? That thing's fucking sweet, dude. Bitchin'. Bitchin', dude. That thing's tits to the wall, dude. I used to hear that one. <laughs> tits to the wall. Dude, that thing's tits to the wall, brother. Bitchin'. You ready? Druggy update. Uh, we talked about last time the side panels kind of covered that. So if you want to dive into that stuff and get details, there's two options. There's just the walk around um, talking about design with this. And then there's also the Fab Diaries episode on kind of finishing these things, putting the bead rolls in them, getting the shape and, and the design right. What we touched on last time was three items. So we had windshield, roof scoop, hood hawk. Yeah, I said hood hawk. Um, these kind of have uh, a purpose. They follow all, you know, each other. The windshield was, was like the original thing on Justin's list to get done. He wanted to clean this thing up and put like a radius windshield. He didn't want a flat piece of glass. And, uh, you know, I don't like to build the things with the big rubber grommet looking things where it's just like a piece of aluminum and then it's like this huge fat looking donut that's cut in half. So we have this thing recessed just like a car. Um, where it's got like a frame and a shelf, and then it's glued in with glass. You know, this is out of a Bronco, this is a 96 Bronco that's cut down on the side, so Mike came through and, uh, you know, I kind of covered the process with him too, but he's my glass guy. Came through, figured out where this thing needs to set height-wise, and then we got the cuts on the side parallel or close to parallel with the chassis. Um, you'd think that this thing's pretty wide, but it's not nearly as wide as the old Bronco. So this is all set up. Obviously it drags down. It's all one big frame that goes under the roof scoop. Now, roof scoop, I think we covered it kind of in the last episode, but I'll touch on it again. The cooler, you know, trans cooler and radiator cooler are all in the back. So if we're deleting airflow from this front opening, then we need to figure out how to redirect airflow and put some kind of positive air into the cooler area. So that's the whole program with the roof scoop. It's fully functional. Uh, it draws all the way back. It, you know, I have this, this frame has like a runoff that goes to about right here. So when you sit in there, you're not like getting the sun straight to your face and you're also not getting elements that you would block with your windshield um, coming through that area. They kind of go over your head. And that's exactly how the air gets directed too. We've, we've ran this thing. We haven't put it through like a heavy duty cycle of, you know, high RPM to kind of check the temps, but I am positive that the scoop matched with openings through the driver's side and the passenger side and also keeping these netted uh, with an addition of our panel openings here we're going to be great on temperatures i have no no problems with that um, the hood hawk is kind of like a trim piece if if we did all of this and we didn't have this here it's not going to tie the whole car in so you know functionally same kind of thing we we did the sketch. There's a really good picture from around this angle here um, that kind of showcases this. And this is one of those things where I talked about, like I didn't want to cover all of this area. It's a truggy. It's supposed to be like a raw, you know, visceral experience where it's kind of open and you see chassis and it's kind of like a buggy and you don't have a body on it. So you really don't want to cross the line of like skinning the whole entire thing to the point where it just looks like it has a body on it. Um, so this opening, like this is the same stuff I sketched out. I did it digitally just to figure out what design was optimal. And I can kind of go through a couple times, figure that stuff out, make sure I get the pass with the client 
uh, and we're both on the same page. And the other thing is when I draw that stuff in the computer, I make sure that I draw it accordingly to my capabilities. So I don't want to draw some crazy shapes where, you know, it's either not in the budget or it's just out of my metal shaping capabilities, which are still limited. So opening here that goes right into the engine, this will be mesh. You have your reservoirs here, you have your horns here. So the horns can, you know, have sound come out here. That's weird, but horns can use the air way to make horn noises and stuff, which those horns make kind of funny noises. Um, the reservoirs still go back in. The height of this is actually still retaining the same fitting that's on the coilover that kind of boners up and then comes down. So we're still square in there with that, like it's not making contact or anything. And then just a simple kind of cowl that hits this whole spot, it goes a little higher than the, the lower windshield line where um, you know you can see like it's, it's higher than the glass. And that was the same detail that we did in the sketch. Um, and the bead roll on the top, that also matches the roof scoop detail. So like we'll get up there and kind of look from the top, but that step, like you want to tie this in. If this was all just one panel with no step roll in it, where it had that kind of graphic or that, that center detail, it wouldn't match everything else. So those shapes all complement the side of the car. The one thing that we're missing right now is just the uh, acrylic panel that will go in, in like the A pillar area and the secondary A pillar, we have a filler here. Uh, that instead of a net, we'll just have like a nice acrylic um, piece of sheet here, like quarter inch or 3 16 So that's coming. Um, the next updates on this thing, we'll talk about this a little more, but the next updates, we're gonna do a dash and then we're gonna do a, a rear mesh panel. Okay, so I mentioned dash. Part of the original plan was to just do the outer skins, put the windshield in, um, get everything final there. And, you know, I, I jokingly said to Justin, I was like, now you just need a dash. And he's like, yeah, we have to have a dash. This, it just doesn't look right now. Um, with that, I, you know, I started thinking like full enclosure dash where, you know, you'd start from like the outer perimeters of the chassis, go across, you know, have this thing, a big plane with like some kind of a rise for the gauges or instruments or whatever. And I started sketching that and I was like, man, I, I just something didn't feel right. And I'm like, all right, well, let's think about this a little bit. The, the truggy theme and, and this, the vibe this thing has is like this partially exposed chassis, you know, like we're just stuff almost like Terminator where part of his skin's on and then like part of it's like this mechanical part that's ripped off. And I think that's the feeling. Like even when you're riding this thing, it just, you smell it and you hear it. And it's like still on this open sense. Like it just, you're, it's ready to go and adventure and um, go bombing in. So I think what we do, and, and I started sketching it is to obviously enclose like the front cowl area and then just have like a pod here, um, just a shape. So you're still keeping, I mean, obviously get rid of some of the tricky stuff here and keep like these tubes. These are structural too, how they're tied in, um, you know, fluff and buff, like some of the old brackets off and then build just like a nice pod that matches the styling of like the exterior, um, that houses the gauges, houses the switches, leave the middle portion, uh, and just have this be removable. So middle pod removable and then like, front cowl um, spanning from, you know, driver's side to passenger side, all removable too. So that's another item. So we get, we get our um, acrylic windows here, or Lexan, and then we get the two pieces here, and then we move to the back behind the seats. Okay, so this rear portion, this is the, we'll call this the B-pillar mesh panel. Um, you'll see like there's just loose ends here that I've kind of cut off to, work around in the workspace the the car itself is rough around the edges but it's functionally sound uh this thing has put the work in for 13 years so i'm not going to complain about that but what we can do is kind of um, dress it appropriately where we're doing functional modifications that also help with the aesthetics of it um, this b pillar mesh panel area um, we have some priorities here so obviously blocking debris 
Um, the fuel cells back there, this thing does have a suppression system on it, but it's still good to have some kind of wall here. Even though there's gonna be woven stainless mesh in here, it's still good to have like a, you know, some kind of perimeter in here from, from the occupants to like the fuel cell and just all the elements in the rear. Um, but priority one is these coolers. So there's obviously a trans cooler here and then the radiators back here. And that's kind of our main squeeze. The biggest bummer on vehicles is if they run hot when you're when you're driving them the way you should. So um, what I'm gonna do with design on this is I've already kind of started concept sketching as far as the layout for the mesh openings. Um, we want to obviously feed the coolers before anything else and then tailor the design to not just the B pillar section here in this wall, but also to the exterior panels and make sure that everything is speaking the same language. So like, um, you know, these areas here where the seats are, um, you can kind of trim some fat and you don't have to have, you know, the, the opening go back behind here to an extent because there's just, there's no air that's gonna be flowing from there anyways. Another thing too that's nice is like, you right off the bat a lot of times you might wanna think like, oh, well we just do the cutouts where the tubes are. Uh, you know, in between these. And if you want to maximize your space, your airflow, it's like this tube can float. You can have your cutout span all the way across this and you just make sure you don't pop hardware in there and you can have your mesh set right there and your opening go past this. You can even do it out here and have it go past this tube as long as, again, like we talked about previously with like the, the rear openings on the exterior panels, just plot your hardware in a way where it makes sense and then you can open up your airways because if you, if you had two openings here, um, you're, you know, you're spanning maybe three to four inches uh, minimum to get hardware and screen in there. And if you just delete that, then it's just a tube and everything's just flowing around it. So we want to address this. Um, I obviously there's some stuff up on the top that needs to be addressed. Um, but that's just like finish work and, uh, We'll, we'll get to that kind of when everything's being gone through final. So just to kind of cover the roof scoop area, um, we have this thing fully documented for Fab Diary, so you guys can look forward to kind of watching the process uh, of developing this piece. It's a pretty large, gnarly piece. Um, I'm still learning the English wheel and like the planishing hammer, and there's there's a lot to be said about using those tools. Um, it's like it's like opening a whole new book with fabrication that I'm I feel like a novice to. Um, and I think a lot of that is just going to be seat time and, and mileage as far as the experience level with that stuff. So now that I have the tools, it's kind of like one of those things when you, when you acquire a new tool, then you start to implement in, into your, your work. And so like I've kind of put some roll and some shape into this a little more than I would normally. Same with the hood panel. Um, but it, it all kind of carries the same design. This is stuff I sketched out. And then obviously this detail is just a breakup and it also adds rigidity. Like you don't want to get lost in that. You know, the, the whole reason for a bead roll and a step is to add rigidity. It's the same thing I always say. It's just like if you had a piece of paper and it's flimsy and it moves around. And then as soon as you like fold it and you do like a hard fold to it, or even if you just and you crinkle that thing up and then you open it, it's going to be more rigid because you've added surface changes to like a flat sheet. So that's, you know, the principle here. It's just about how you make that look and how you implement that the right way to where it, it, it's aesthetically pleasing. So we have this whole thing. Um, and then there's obviously mesh in there that that woven mesh is pretty rigid and it's actually got a break going up and it's grabbing the four uh, quarter turn fasteners up there as these buttons. And then it's also broke on the bottom. So it's actually acting like, like almost like a piece of C channel. And obviously it's not C channel, but just that shape where you know, I can fasten it with the Zeus buttons on the top and then I can fasten it on the bottom and it holds the whole front profile that because you know, if there's not standoffs under that thing, just over time, especially like beating on the thing, whoop section after whoop section and just using it properly, that, that middle portion is gonna wanna fail and fatigue no matter what. So I have the four pickups there and then I also have two pickups here and the thing's already like solid, like it's, 
good, but I have two more that go in there. They're just not in there because I've been taking this thing on and off. So, so that kind of, that sums up our top panel. One other detail, let me kind of do a crawl. What I noticed and I, I spoke about before is the cap tubes. So like this area had like this 90'd out, you know, thing sticking out here. Uh, what I did is I just, I cut that portion off, didn't go into the tubes at all, and then capped it, blended it so it looks like a broke, like a broke cap plate, and then re-welded it just so it kind of complements the shapes here. Um, you can see like on the scoop, I mean, there's a, this whole shape, you can see in the Fab Diaries episode how we built this thing, but this used to be all solid and I cut this out so we get that rigidity. If it was just a flat panel here, it wouldn't make sense. Uh, and then obviously this portion, there's, a, there's a, a return or a step in here so it keeps everything flat. It's not just like a panel laying on top of another panel. You don't want that. You always want stuff to index. That's what makes sense. So we'll talk about a couple more things and uh, move on. Some of the details on the windshield frame are just solely from form follows function, just how to get this thing on and off. So like obviously the, the reservoirs, I didn't need to change where they were. I feel like they're a cool design element. So they're clearanced to fit in here. And then obviously the intake that runs into the cab with like a UMP style filter, like a canister filter. Um, the tube going to the engine is here. And then all these cuts, like there's kind of a, uh, a larger gap that draws into this panel and that's just so this whole thing can come off as one it, it, you got to kind of figure out what you're building and make sure you don't barricade yourself in with the part where then you go to take it off and you're like oh shit it doesn't come off or you're having to tweak something or it just you know manipulate something to get the actual part off so this thing is modular where it it, it just drops in you know you take this off you take that off and then this one goes first you drop it in and then bink bink so same with this like for for any kind of flex or service, we have it. We have it, you know, appropriately gapped here, appropriately gapped off the glass, where it's just it's safe. We're kind of playing it safe. Same with these panels. These panels index, so you can just pop these two out, and you can see the other side's on. I just don't have the fasteners on, but this actually captures. So again, you're you're indexing a panel. You're not just trying to fit them at a seam. So phase two is complete on this thing. Fringed in radius windshield. Functional roof scoop, hood hawk, uh, all done. We have fab diaries on both the windshield frame and roof scoop process. So you guys can look forward to that this Friday. Uh, that's what we're gonna keep doing unless you guys have a different format that you'd like to see. But it'll be, you know, with specific builds, we'll do a fab diary Friday or specific things that we wanna cover. So they're not gonna be every Friday, but they can be concurrent with like releasing this on our normal Monday and then having it follow up on Friday with like the actual build process and the fabrication side of it. Uh, and then we're gonna move on to the interior appointments. So like I mentioned before, I guess this would be an exterior thing, but we're gonna put these windows in, that's gonna complete that outer look. And then we're gonna get all the instrument panel finished on and the, uh, like the middle cowl cover and the B pillar mesh panel done. And then that's gonna conclude this thing. And once that's done, then we're gonna go testing. So we'll be able to get this thing in the dirt and show you what it does and how it sounds and how it looks in its natural environment. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough for the support. It helps us out. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what you wanna see. If there's more you wanna see, if there's something that catches your eye, uh, just comment, let us know, and thank you.